SRV separation confirmed. Coming up on uh, staging, the burnout of these twin solid rocket boosters at two minutes, five yeah. seconds. Yeah. I can tell you about my life, I got scars for the proof. No my bars are the truth, now it's stars in the roof. Plus I'm rolling with another star. If you ever saw the service on a double R, could have bought another car. Reasoning with Lizzie, yeah, I talk to my money. I'll be running to the bands, they just walk to the money. You can't talk to me funny. Never. She gave me brains in the roller, that's what I call thoughts in the collie. Hey, okay. You from London? Bro, stop this, man. You get me? Stop this. I was hot property. Okay. I've gone to the snow to cool myself down. Do you think you could take gets in a in a bike race? What's wrong with you, man? What, man? You want to autograph me? Shut up, man. Shut up. No, Smacked his head off. Dad, I don't want you to box because if you lose, I'm going to get bullied. <laughs> you two are horrible. <laughs> horrible people. <laughs> The champ is here! <laughs> that sauce! The champ is here! Jeez! <laughs> I know I need a coat in the ink. Let me take that for you, sir. Let me let me take that. Get me you, nice on, brother. We don't need you doing any labour. Where's you know the what where's the door thing on this? You've already outdone yourself, right here. Oh the switch oh yeah, broski, what are you saying? What's happening, post? How are you? I'm alright, broski. Oh the old mist. It's been going on, bro. Yo, man. it's been it's been a few different things, you know. So that's what I like about you, you know. Any time they count you out, you're always going to be making bread in so many you different ways. You know what I'm saying? You have to be versatile with it. Since the beginning of your career, like, you know what I'm saying? It's incredible to see how far you come, but let's talk about what's been going on the last couple of weeks. So, last couple of weeks. So, you're doing the Mike Tyson online? You I'm going to have to do the Mike Tyson. You know what's crazy, bro, about that last couple of weeks? I've never trained for something like that in my life. So what are you saying? You took this fight extremely Three weeks, seriously. bro. Oh, it was three weeks? Um, three weeks. Is that how much notice you had for had the fight? Three weeks notice. So how did that, like, obviously we've seen you and Ryan together before. Yeah. How did it get to the point where it was like, you guys were going to have a fight together? Well, obviously he was around, man. So obviously mum went to support him when he started boxing, went there, he ended up throwing a headbutt for someone. Got long story short, after that boxing match, whoever was in his changing room came back to me. I said, yo, bro, you know that Ryan's saying he's on the tumor gene, you don't even know it. I'm like, what are you about, man? Thinking it's a joke. About three, four days after the tune being out, man's on the net talking about, yo, my longtime friend, best friend, a snake me. I said, then obviously there was a bit of back and forth on the net. I must have said, from early, like, bro, all this trying to embarrass man on the net, I'm gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? Physically do something. Then, owner and misfits, they got mums. He's hit man like, yo, why are you fancy about getting in the ring? And you, you got anyone that you think? I said, yo, man, would like to get in there with Ryan Taylor, man. Let's find out his weight. For sure. Should and his first round did you have minute. to lose much weight before the actual fight? I found out on the day of weighing how much he was meant to weigh. We had to weigh 190. Well, I've got on the scales, bro. Chains on. Like 11 pounds over. Oh, wow. But obviously, man was with professionals who were coaching as professionals, we went away, black bag on, sweating it out, bro. Had an hour. The weighing geezer told me, you've got an hour to strip the weight. I have never done this in my life, bro. The coach made man do some madness. Mama Zala, just sweating it out in a, uh, in a single bed, four quilts on, rug on, heating on directly. And man lost pounds in an hour, went back, weighed 188, so now I'm a pound lower than him. And went in for the fight, bro. Smacked his head off in the first round. And how did it feel to like do all that in those three weeks and actually win? Felt good, bro. But one thing it made me understand is that the way I won, I wouldn't have won if I didn't train. Like I hit mum with a jab. That's a boxing move, you know. You ain't throwing that on road. I don't know. You don't really see man throw the jab yeah, on you road. Don't really see that the, it's more of a haymaker or a hook. I noticed that after the fight, it seemed like. He was in a place where he kind of wanted to bury the hatchet now that you guys had fought. But then you said about the Muppets and all that. <laughs> nah, but it seemed like, it seemed like, it seemed like even though you'd won, you still don't want any sort of Because resolution. of the bad energy. No, nah, no, nah, it's cool, man. I was cool. So whatever I wanted to get out of the fallout, I got. Okay. But for me, unless it makes money, it don't make sense. 
I want to talk about your music career actually because I actually remember when you first took us all by storm when you dropped the infamous car last back. I feel like that was the big, big groundbreaking moment for you. I had an office in Bow at the time and I remember, I remember you dropped it. this, you dropped this on Link Up and it was like it just came out of nowhere because our videos was ringing at the time and then it's like all of a sudden there's this mad guy from Birmingham talking about cool ass up now, <laughs> stuff that we've never heard about yet. Yeah. And he's just shutting down the net. When you first released that track, did you realize the impact it was about to have when you dropped that? And how quickly did your life change when you dropped that song? Because I feel like when Mist came in the game, it was very different to when a lot of people came in the game. Yeah, but you know what's mad, yeah? Because being from Birmingham, I had so much fire in my heart. And because not coming to London a lot growing up, only coming when I when I, I made some come myself and got... Obviously, I used to come with my mum, Madam Two Swords, Toy Shop. Tourism you know what I'm saying? Stuff, but yeah, yeah. Tourism stuff. I've never landed and seen a city moving so fast and understand that I need to break into this. So... I was like a tourist, blood. Mm. When I landed, I used to move like I was on holiday. I didn't want to sleep. And it's mad because I remember R.I.P. Jamal, yeah? That was my first ever, you get me, London experience. So I remember building my, my, my little platform. Being up north here, yeah, I felt like I was already popping so much up north, blood. I was so famous. Oh, so up did there. you have a buzz up there? And I had so much of a buzz up there. Oh, Birmingham, yeah. Manny, Derby, Knots, all of that round there. So they knew Leeds. You knew, yeah. I was good over there, Bradford. Yeah. I just couldn't get into London. They knew, because I already got a, a tune called Sick Made. Get robbed there and get in your Darnas back. That's my favourite one. This is what I'm saying. I'm bugging out. So from that, early, was, that was the one. That was the one. That was the one. It all started from another SPTV. I said a little bit of. Fan base, then I done a fire in the booth. Now people are ringing, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying it, but they're saying, What's Carla's? What's Art Mars? What's you know what I'm saying? And then boom, man managed to drop Carla's back, bro. Which but it changed the game of it, and you know what it did, bro. More than people that's liking my music, I get thanked, yeah. And big up all my Punjabi fan base, all my Asian fan base, because when they thanked me for embracing the culture. It's not just about the music, it's about embracing it. So, it brought a next, it brought a next vibe. When you dropped that song, I can't think of anyone that was more buzzing than you. Yeah, yeah it was Do you real. get what I'm saying? And being from Birmingham, and having a different accent, it brought a whole new swing to the UK scene. And what it did, it opened that bridge from north to down here, and it made people understand that it doesn't really matter you can be from out of town and still represent for the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because being from America, bro, you know, if you go, man, you're from London? You yeah, think they know yeah. about, only probably now they know about Birmingham or, you get me? Everyone is from, if you're from UK, you're from London? You're from London? No, not know about no Birmingham or Manny or Leeds or whatever is up north. There's so many rumours about your, <laughs> your first record deal, yeah? I just know it was mad, but it's like even in like the industry and how everybody was talking, it was like, Miss just got signed for 500 grand. Miss got signed for a million pound. Miss got, and these were numbers that nobody was getting. I feel yeah, like, it's crazy. I feel like you was almost the precedent in terms of how much you can sign a deal for. Yeah, I started that hype still because I brought, what I was bringing was new. It was mad, yeah. I studied the game in such a mad way. I wanted to do mad videos. And I wanted jewels. And I wanted to not change up the brum thing. I wanted to bring the brum flow into the industry. So man, even like, man bought the nine fives. Man went wearing nine fives down here when man was coming in North Face and nine fives. So how were you able to have the knowledge at the time to Don't negotiate something that so seemed so far-fetched at the time? Remember, I'm saying people used to be signing for 50K, 100K, something like that. And that was like, oh, you've done all right. Do you get what I'm saying? For you to I sign... I think what I did was held out off the first deal. You had what? Right, so when I was making offers, I didn't jump at the first offer. Okay. What I did was I always had music that was ready to be released. So you know how it goes in a meeting, you show them that music as well, like, yo, we've got this one dropping as well, but you still want to offer that? All right, nice one. Then we drop. 
And after dropping, you'd get that other phone call. Like, yo. Oh, so you drop and not sign yeah, it. Yeah, because I was drop. independent yeah, all yeah. the way up to hot property. Okay. Ain't the same in Dubai. Mad vids. Uh, that was independent. When I'm in the snow, that's all independent. Okay. A lot of people think I signed and started shooting mad vids. It was all independent from there. Because it just created so much hype where they're thinking, what is this geezer on? Can you re re reveal once and for all what you actually got signed for all them years ago? It's all them years ago. It was all them years ago? Yeah. It was a 2.3. Mil? No. You're capping. Stop this. I swear to God. What year was this? This was in 017. Bro, stop this, man. You get me? Stop this, stop this, stop this. So obviously on signature. Stop this. So you negotiated 2.3 in 2017? 2.3 in 2017. That is, that is a madness. You get me? Do you get what I'm saying? So you know what happens off signature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So from there, the new miss landed out, blood. That's insane. No wonder you were shooting a video. So I'll, I want to talk about the videos, actually. So basically, a little bit of UK history. I feel like it was Blade that initially started shooting videos And I'm abroad. glad you even yeah. said that because I'm a big Blade fan. No, I respect to Blade. That's my guy. 100%. I was, part of, I was part of that process. All them yachts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was How can there. I explain this? Lifestyles going oh, no, through some changes. You remember, you you remember them ones? No, of course I do. You get me? Dad, what created me making the style of my videos? Because I watched Blade videos and I was watching Nina's. Nina was the king of videos at the stage. Remember when he changed like 10 times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't blame me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, that's what... I'm still up there thinking, oh, man, I can't do a normal vid. Then I had to keep up with it, blood. Yeah, no. This is where hot property come from. The tune, I don't even say hot property once in there, but if you clock it, I called it hot property because I was, it was just before I signed my deal. Okay. That's why I called it hot property. I was hot property. Okay. I've gone to the snow to cool myself down. Okay. I ever told this to anyone before, but that was the tune which got man basically the 2.3, but that was the last song that man released independently. That's insane. And, and so, yeah, now it's important that you acknowledge some of the people you drew inspiration from, but what I was actually going to tell you is that you took it to a different level because you know what it is, yeah? Them times, we used to go abroad and we're just on holiday, but we're filming what we're doing. Yeah, Does yeah, that yeah. make sense? So, like, if you look at the drug dealer video, for example, the Blade drug dealer video, yeah, yeah. like, we're just abroad at parties, having fun, whatever, but obviously because them times people didn't used to go to some of these places, it looked like craziness yeah, if yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, any yeah. sense because yeah, we were a little bit of a ahead of our time in those see, moments. I saw Mayweather's in the video and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, this is before Mayweather even touching England. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. 100%. But what, what I really liked about your videos is you were actually going there for a video With shoot. A drone before. You know what? No, no, you're going there and you're, you're going there to shoot the video. Like, everything's patterned in terms of the video shoot. So you took it to another level in terms of this is a video shoot. Yeah, Does that yeah, make yeah, any yeah, sense? Yeah. So everything had purpose. And I really like that you really came in and took and grew from that at a certain state, even touching on the jewelry and stuff like that. You just had an impact in terms of like, people who just be like, oh my God, like, Miss is the richest rapper ever. And yeah, they're going the, crazy. Like, that's how they, yeah, they was going like, crazy. you've had so much kind of rumors and good speculation on your name because of how creative you are. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. The things you've been able to accomplish, so. With the chains and stuff like that, why was there a need for you to... Because you actually probably, to be honest, encouraged the chain culture in the UK a little bit more, to be fair. For me, I felt like rappers that was my inspiration growing up, i.e. 50 Cent, Tupac, Biggies, um, uh, it was even like any of them, Redman, Method Man, Wu-Tang Clan, they always had the brand on the chain. I wanted to represent my brand. And bro, I've been down, bro. I've been down, fam. I just wanted to floss, bro. I've never, you know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to have that life that, that I've always visualized, or I've never really been a hater as well. So if I see a man's jewels, I just think, I can't wait to get that on. I can't wait to, man can get my own one. Dirty money used to rock, man. Because all in the early videos, you see, man, in the dirty, dirty money, time. 
So even that helped man a lot, you know what I'm saying? And man got my, my own time, put Brum on the map, got my the whole city literally on the train. No, no, 100%. They definitely had an impact. I even remember back in the day, I was actually talking to a girl and she was like, oh, like my mum probably, my mum don't want me to end up with a, with Mist. But when she said my mum don't want me to end up with Mist, this is not, not anyone you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know why she called you Mist? Why she just referred to Mist in that <laughs> thing? You was the epitome of what, like, a bad boy was in her <laughs> eyes. As in, Miss, the image, the chains, the rapper. Like, Leave you was... Clean, like, like, she went, like she, my mum don't want me to end up with a rapper, basically, yeah? But instead of saying rapper, she said, Miss. Yeah, yeah, like, you was the epitome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's levels to your sick. <laughs> There was yeah, this. but yeah. Yeah, yeah, and even down to like, yo, man's a bit of a man's a wild geezer, bro. Man love cars, man love bikes. Yeah, yeah. It's mad. My man's got to live man's dream, and yeah. I can find music. It's took man around the world. It's made me experience crazy things. No, hundred you know percent. I want to talk about your love for bikes and cars. Yeah, because it seems so organic and authentic, and like you seem like you really enjoy that. Where does that? Where does that love and passion for cars come from? But growing up, I grew up in an area. I grew up in Birmingham, obviously, and I grew up in an area called Erdington. Yeah, yeah, I know so about there's Erdington. there's a lot of stolen cars, stolen bikes growing up. And my brother worked on cars, so he'd bring them back from work. If it's a nice guy, he'd take me around the blocks. So I've always had that love for cars. Growing up, obviously, man couldn't afford these bits and bobs. There was neighbours that had motorbikes from young. So when I actually managed to get man's own motorbikes and that, yo, man's buying the best of the best, you know what I'm saying? Crazy broke my ankle though from it. Man's man's got a couple injuries from it, I ain't gonna lie. Are you better on a bike or in a car? I say bike, you know. Do you think you could take gets in a in a bike race? Of course. Per se? Oh really? I see gets on quite cool. You know what is oh, okay, gets okay. is a wheelie. Okay, okay, okay. The rate gets yeah. his, his, his technique on doing wheelies. Mad thing. But you get me if it's a racing team, sorry, you know what I'm gonna say, I see you know. And we get to let man know and it's summertime. Yeah, yeah, no, for yeah, sure, we can make that happen. you got a quad as well? Nah, nah, I'm not really a quad guy. I'm not really a speed freak, you know? Yeah. I'm more that's of a laid back, trying to... So you're near electric You team. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's more my bag. I want to talk about also, like, your upbringing and stuff like that, because a lot of people don't know the sort of adversities that you've been through as a young man to be able to kind of even achieve this much or this level of success with not a lot of people pointing you in the right direction direction maybe do you get what i'm trying to say and you've lost a lot of people in your life as yeah. well right can you touch on that so boom when i was 19 i lost both my parents okay in a short space child, of time short space of time three months lost my mom she had an aneurysm on her brain sorry to hear um, then in the heart getting weak, she passed away. Three, no, no, actually, my dad passed away first. Cardiac arrest. Dad did music as well. So he came off stage and passed away. He played guitar. He used to do his thing. In his day, he was on top of the pops and that. J.A. Okay. L.M. Band. You get me? Look out for that one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then had my youth that same year. So I think it went, had my daughter, lost my pops, lost my mum. And then about, I think about a year after that, my house got repossessed, but... I said, bruv, I'll be honest, man's been a mummy's boy growing up. I didn't open no letters, I didn't know about a mortgage, I didn't know about anything. So when my mum passed away, I went opening mum's letters. It's not really a thing to open mummy's letters growing up. And, um, quite a long story short, bro, the house got repossessed, but... It's mad, though, because we've managed to purchase back that into the family now. Okay. Yeah, man. Sick, congratulations. Which is good. When man lost the yard, that's when it kind of went down in all blood. Now I'm just outside in whips. Man sleeping in my whip, basically, you get me? Pulling up anywhere. Late one, grafting till whatever time, and just pulling up, putting my chair back, getting up when the sun's up. Keep it stepping, go to my people's yard, shower up and keep it moving, you know? Then obviously that led for me getting into a mad police chase. I used to drive the whip with no tax, no insurance, no muck. Petrol burnouts. Petrol burnouts is when you just go to the pump. It's like one minute whilst just move out, cars all hot. End up getting into a mad chase. Two helicopters, a motorway. End up going to prison. But it's mad, yeah, because they say prison makes you or breaks you. Yeah. Well, it made me because 
before that, I didn't have nowhere to stay. It made me, you can't leave prison without having an address as well. Okay. So everything that I got in prison, I actually needed to become who I was today. I needed my birth certificate, I needed a passport, I needed identification. And it, I don't know, you know what I mean? You need bare things, but they, they won't let you out of jail unless you've, you've patterned it. So obviously I had to pattern up a place to live. I ended up going to a hostel. I think it was like 18 people. Bro, one, I think like two bathrooms. Effed in there, completely on the other side of town in Handsworth. I'm from Erdington. In that hostel, man was spitting bars. Geezer's knocked my door, like, yo, what are you saying? Boom, boom. He, he, he blazed, we got into a conversation, we're having a little zoo and whatnot. He's raw said, yo, I got a bridge that works with people I know, you know. I went to college with him. Um, he's recording freestyles, you should. Um, drop them bars, that man, man here, yeah, you drop in, trust me, I'm telling you, you cold. I think I was 23 or 24, like, nah. Man's too old. I think my daughter was like four or five. I said, nah, I'm too old, man. I'm too old for my daughter to be, you know what I'm saying, seeing her dad rap. I remember it wasn't a cool thing to rap at a stage, but. Yeah, of course. It was like a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Unless you had it popping and Gucci that head to toe, you couldn't really just drop bars like that. Yeah. But yeah, man, ended up doing the freestyle, which was that one in the car in my ear, so I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're spitting from outside the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With your bridging in the car. With my yeah, bridging yeah, yeah. in the car. And Shadow was in the car. That was literally, as I come out, I was still on tag there. Mm. And it's mad all that started from the hostel, so it's crazy about the decisions that I had to make. I remember I was so brewing that I had to be in the hostel. I tried to go to my auntie's on tag, she said no. Well, I'll stop talking to her for a bit. Mm. Saying, what, I can't come to your house? She's like, nah, you're a big man, you need your own place. Well, it's all mad now, now that I've grew up and got older, I understand what everyone was doing. Yeah, and you've realised how much I it's helped realised they created me into the man I am today. I needed my own place to call home, even though it started as a hostel, and now I'm living in a completely different place. But let's keep it real, man. If you rewind eight years ago, nine years ago, that's not a lot of time. Let's talk about actually something that's important. Obviously, you came from nothing. I mean, there was points in which you didn't even have an address. You yeah. know what I'm trying to say? When you're, you you get put in a position where you're signing a deal, for example, for 2.3 mil. Yeah. Yeah. Like, how do you know what to do with the money? If you don't, when people say, 2.3 mil, people think you get 2.3 mil on signature. It's not yeah. that. I think you get, um, I get 25% or something like that. Well, you might have got like, what, 500 to start with, maybe? Yeah, something half a like bar. That. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying, bro. Coming from nothing to have half a bar. Yeah, I mean, in 20, 20, 2017, that's oh, even before the pandemic. Right. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and obviously, it's not like man weren't doing my thing before that, so man had a little, you get me? Yeah. A little quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, brother, I was, you get me? Did you buy a house? Straight away, or didn't did you just go straight, straight away. chain gang? Um, you knew the rest was lucky. What I did first, I used to spoil my daughter mad. I used to go to Smith's and just get, bruv, like, bruv, you know when you see man just doing the mad aisle one? Because mm. I felt like, dude, I remember a time where my daughter was asking me for things that I couldn't get it, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. the mum's like, she wants to do something, I'm rah. I was going to have to hustle for that one. You know what I'm saying? So just being in a position where I could do that, I did that. But you know what's mad? Coming from where I've come from, as you said, there was rumours that man got signed for everything. All these mad numbers, you get me? Yeah. So, bruv, every man, his dog, cousin, old school was trying to shout, man, you know what I'm saying? And obviously, not everyone's clean-hearted. You know what I'm saying? Old school bread jeans, this. People saying you forgot about them. Man, I'm moving bookie. You know what I'm saying? It's big bread, fam. People have never heard about them numbers. No, of course. So what I had to do is I had to move out the ends. And you finally bought a house then? Yeah, yeah, I got out of them and now I'm in the countryside. What would you say? Is that your biggest investment that you've ever made? I wouldn't say that was my biggest investment. My biggest investment, I would say, yeah. You know what's mad? Because I've always been a car man in my I've made mad dwarf cars. Being who I am, and owning a car. People just want to buy my whips, bruv. Yeah, so you sell them on mad recently. Bread. Quickly. Yeah. I've raffled whips. I've, you know what I'm saying? I do mad things. 
But I would always say, definitely put some some bread in properties so just for that rainy day. Yeah, no, 100%. What's wrong with you, man? What, man? You want some autograph, man? Shut up, man. Shut up. You can't. You fucking can't. Anyway, <laughs> what was I going to say? <laughs> I want to talk about Erdington quickly. Did you grow up with JK or was that more of a relationship that formed once you lot of... I grew up with him. I used yeah. to do grime before rap. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. the grime scene, JK was the one that was running the sets. Yeah. So if there's a set going on, it would be over in JK's ends. Man, I have to go over to JK's ends. He's got a little radio set. You Is that in, was JK's ends in Erdington or was nah, that another small leaf. Okay. Is that far from you? Yeah, it's quite far still. Okay, okay. It's like the other side of the town, so you go over there. And basically, them days, you go in there for a wheel-up. And see, that was already cool. Already cool. So it was crazy that we was both coming up in the scene as well. Same yeah. time I was coming up, JK was coming up as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah, though he's been in the game and smacking the grime scene, but he then started doing the collabs, which he's doing, and obviously the ones that he got all the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Flax no, 4 and whatnot. We was both on a mad journey. Yeah. So it's crazy we linked up once, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got a tune in. And we was both flying the flag, bro, for Brom. Yeah, differently man. commercially even up to this day we still link up and get made us it's like like years ago you know what i'm saying we're all older we've all got kids now when you came about we also saw like a new breed of manager like one of your old managers go yeah and he was for me a manager you know like a lot of rappers come into the game with their friends that's like a manager but he came across a little bit different at the time. He's, it felt like he knew more. Yeah, what's good with Gov? He was my mate as well as my manager. He yeah. found me in the hostel. He was on the come So up. he found you in the hostel? Yes. Okay. Remember so that's I said, how he found you? Because basically, I was, as I said, man was popping up north before popping in London. Mm. So when man started saying, oh, no, it's Carlos, this Gov is, must be thinking, who is this black geezer? Yeah, yeah, From yeah. Brum saying, oh, no, it's Carlos. And, um... He got in contact with me, like, yo, have you got any management? Man was managing myself. I used to write number and city. Because the only thing I knew about business in music was shows. Okay. I didn't think there was any other side of, of, of business like that. Yeah. Like, I knew, but I just didn't know how to get into it. You know, like, I was just dealing with my shows. Yeah. So when Gov come to link me, obviously, he'd not long left uni. He was fresh energy as well. We was both young. And we both just came into the scene. He's from Derby as well, so he's all he would always link me as well. You get me? So and you know what? With the two point three deal, big up government. Obviously, if it weren't for government, wouldn't even getting them numbers. Yeah, I feel you know like it was. It's important to mention government. Nah, nah, you have to you have to mention him because like early days, bro. I'm a mad man, bro. This geezer had to deal with some crazy shit that he didn't sign up for. Yeah, <laughs> I take my hats off to him. You get me? And um, just me, it's been a mad journey, but it's good because even like he's my, still my very good friend now, we still link up, you get me? Even though we don't, um, he doesn't manage me no more, but I just feel like we both outgrew each other in this music scene and what's going on right now, you know what I'm saying? Do you know what my favourite thing about Gov was as a manager? He was the only manager, yeah, that used to ask for stuff, yeah, and I would always say yes to him, yeah. And whenever I ask for stuff, he would always say no. He <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, yo, Posty, can you do me a favour? Tell me the favour, I'll do it. It's all done, yeah? You two, when you came about, yeah, you need to understand. Anything you want from Mist, it was a hustle. Like, you two were, like, the biggest hustlers. Yeah. You two was the biggest hustlers. You, you lot weren't doing nothing. <laughs> you lot weren't doing nothing. Now, but as I said, bro, coming so to London... So you see London. what I see you today? I remember those days, man. I remember yeah, those days. Yeah, I was still trying to get my, my tax back. <laughs> <laughs> I was still trying to get my tax back. You two are horrible. <laughs> horrible people. Now you're going to have to put your foot down in this bad boy in a minute. Now I'm going to have to see the electric push. Come on, man. I'm going to show you. Look at my See what's going on? See what I'm doing? Let me see what's going on. Mr. Let us die, man. Please. That's alright, that is. That's alright, that is. I'm saying, man, I've moved different. So, I want to talk about something else that was super iconic Fisherman. Yeah. Do you wish there was a video for that? Because that well, was I a wish, legendary man. song. 
I wish there was a video still. I feel like it would have been a lot bigger. Was there ever a chance that there was meant to be a video for that and it just didn't happen? Um, there was meant to be, man. I just feel like, I don't even know, man. You know politics with different labels and everyone dropping different things and yeah, man. I wish that we could have dropped a video for that. That's a, that's a classic, isn't it? So now that you've been kind of well known for all these years, you know, the most difficult thing to do actually sometimes is being, staying consistent and staying yeah. relevant. It's actually sometimes easier to get here. It's harder to stay. Just maintain and be like, hey. Yeah, yeah. So what what kind of things have you been doing to kind of maintain your position? What I've done I was mad. Obvious. Obviously, COVID was a mad time, bro. Yeah. Being the artist that I was, I'm not really a project um, artist for my singles. And I like doing my videos off the singles, off the back of it. So obviously, COVID and off the back of that, I do shows. And I always believe that shows play a big part to the showing who you are and how big you are as an artist when people can go on the socials and see that yo he's done another show to that crowd and even if they don't want to notice they'll notice you know what I'm saying so with no shows going on and that man I had to start using man's personality to man's advantage man I ended up getting my own TV show on BBC driving cars yeah it was incredible which I've is seen crazy that. which seen was like you know what I'm saying I've sat down in jail and watched Top Gear and prayed like, yo, imagine having that job, just driving cars for a living. A man actually, you know what I'm saying? And it's all off the back of music. What do you think the most difficult thing that you have to deal with from being successful or being well known? The thing entitlements. That... Okay, let's talk about that. I believe that entitlements is that so much people think they're entitled just because they know you. Which is mad because some people are happy for you. Some people want the world from you. Some people just want the lifestyle. You know what I mean? They'll never come to the studio with you, but they want to come to every show. When you realise that there's a lot of entitlements, you can you can differentiate the real from the fake. And one thing I can say now today, I've stripped down. No have, you lost a, have you lost? <laughs> have you lost a lot of friendships to? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't even say friendships. I would say that, dude. Anyone that I've lost have just been associates that came along the way. Anyway, anyone that was there from the start that knew me before I was the man of today, they're still there because they understand. And what do you think your greatest achievement has been so far in your career? For me, my achievement from my musical career would have to be my mobile. And I watched that from a kid on TV. And I wanted for the best video as well, so it was crazy. But what that did, it turned me on to a new level, switched on my brain, let me know, like, but this is actually real, but you're winning awards that people have been trying to get for their life, you know what I'm saying? As much as you say, yo, you was the biggest thing, you was popping, in man's head, you don't think that. Yeah. You're thinking, I don't know what to drop next. You get that anxiety about, ah, oh, what if I drop and they're not feeling it, or... It's not got that much views as that one, but obviously you just got to be calm and keep dropping, bro. When I bumped into you today, there was, there was a cloud, like a mist. <laughs> a mist of marijuana. You get me? And I think every time I've bumped into you in my life, there has been a mist of marijuana. Yeah, bro. Do you think you smoke the most? Um, yeah, the, man. As, is, it, no, is, there, is there a rapper that can smoke you I don't the smoke to get high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I smoke to normalise the situation. And I'm self-medicated, you know what I'm saying? That's how I believe it. It's not no smoking to get high and, ah, let's have a little laugh. Man's been through trauma. You know what I mean? There's certain anxieties that need fulfilling with certain callies. I hear you. And that's how real it is. Probably if I didn't smoke, I wouldn't have held out for the 2.3. True. True. It made you take take yeah, the overstand it. Yeah, you get time. me? It's been a while since I wanted to put on a suit and, um, you know, the uh, anniversary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ghosty, champs, gold bottles. Oh, you're talking about the, you're talking about the gala? Yeah, yeah, the gala, yeah. You know, you was invited. I, I saw you when I won the Legacy Award at the YouTube thing. I saw and I went asked where was the gala. And I told you, you was invited. But you see NQ, you know, you're, you're managed by NQ, one of the biggest management companies in the UK yeah. for black British music. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. <laughs> and I feel like the information Did got to somebody to that wasn't the somebody at the time. You know what I'm saying? 
But you know, don't worry, we're gonna fix that this time around. Nah, nah, trust me, man's got the suits. I need, in the, in I need, I need you in the building, bro. Trust me, bro. I need you in the building. You know what we did for GRM? Yeah, yeah, no, 100%. And it's it, man, trust me, bro. You didn't do it for free, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Yo, boy. Yo, it's part of the game, man. And let me tell you something, something so funny, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you something so funny. I'm actually doing a deal, yeah? Like, might be doing a business deal. Yeah. And a close friend of mine told me about the business deal, yeah? Turns out Gov's involved, yeah? yeah. Gov's my guy, though. But yeah, yeah, Gov's, yeah, like, yeah. my friend. Like, I want to see Gov and crack jokes. I don't want to do business yeah, with him because yeah. he is tight, <laughs> yeah? I just see Gov on the call and I knew what Gov had done. I knew it. I ain't spoken to my friend about it. I ain't spoken to Gov about it. But I know what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely need you at the gala for sure. Nah, man, trust me, get one there, bro. Yeah. One of the talks. Yeah, yeah, come on, we need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What? Telling you. What else, though, man? What's new? What you got planned? Even this legacy one, but with this instrument. Oh, you ready for that? We'll see when you're ready, you know what I'm saying? What you think? We Mike asked you. you we asked you. We asked you. You're talking about GRM Radio. Yeah, bro, man, wanna, yeah, man, man will do a legacy tune on there. No, no, you'd be a sick GRM radio artist. You got nothing but bangers. Yeah, I'd go mad. I'd do four mad ones live. No, we need like six. But you got six, six easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, but yeah, no, I appreciate you coming down for this journey. Trust man. me, family. You know what I'm saying? I the way you were swinging the other day, I said, no. Smacked his head off. <laughs> Remember, obviously, <laughs> anyone else want to get in there? Just let man know. Is it? Or oh, you got your eyes on anyone? Yeah, nah, nah, no, did you? I don't really got my eyes on no one. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. That was smooth. But yeah, nah, I appreciate you coming down, man, for real. And Come on, obviously, my What's that? Posty. Love, every time. Love. Appreciate Listen, you, man. Yo, the hands are sore, my hands are sore. Man. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry, sorry, sorry. broke my hand again. My man. Talks in the roller. Oh, hey, I know you've been playing that to your kids at home. The bang. Have yeah. you been showing them? Yeah. How was your oldest? How oldest is 13. But she was saying deep things, girl. Oh. Like, Dad, I don't want you to box, because if you lose, I'm gonna get bullied. Oh. You know, your daughter start saying them things. Did she to say that? And yeah, I you could have yeah. never have lost that yeah, fight. Man. Mad. That's what that was in the brain. Oh shit! When you getting in the ring? Nah, I'm on it. I'm doing this right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm focusing on the car.